my sisters and brothers, as we begin this sacred triduum, we begin with the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And from the name, the Mass of the Lord's Supper, you would logically conclude that the gospel we hear would be the institution of the Eucharist, a celebration of that anamnesis, that remembrance, that we celebrate each time we come together. You could also logically conclude from the first reading that we would ponder what it means to be in flight as the people of so long ago prepared to leave Egypt. And as we know, our Jewish brothers and sisters have begun to celebrate the feast of the Passover this week. Yet John's gospel on the night of the Last Supper presents the completion of the Passover, not the beginning that we hear in Exodus. In Exodus, we hear of a people in flight, preparing to flee slavery, preparing to flee Egypt, running away from captors, from whips, from injustice and oppression. And we hear God's promise to spare them the destruction that was about to happen. It would be a worthy place to begin to ask, how did Jesus and his disciples celebrate their liberation? But instead, John gives to us the end of what Passover means, to set us on the way to understanding rightly what Jesus' ministry was about. If you want to read what John says about the Eucharist, you need to go back to John chapter 6 and read the Bread of Life discourse. Instead, John chooses to show us what it means to be this new community that has found freedom in baptism, has found freedom in resurrection, has found freedom in Christ, and what it means to now be the living presence of Christ in the world. Because it was after supper was done, after that they had consumed the body and blood of Christ for the first time, that Jesus gives to them this model of what it means to be a disciple in the world. And he says to Peter, you don't yet understand, but you will. You don't yet understand, but that will come. We too, at times, need to be reminded what it means to be Christ in the world, what it means to be a people who come together to celebrate that we have been freed from slavery to sin, that we are liberated from the yoke of the devil, that we come together as a people who have been redeemed by the blood of Christ and even more importantly, sent out by Christ into our world. And it was to teach us how to be Christ that Jesus gave us this example of washing the feet of one another. One of the great mysteries of the Christian faith, as any priest and diary can attest, is how do you find 12 people to get their feet washed? <laughs> Trust me when I say that the party in the Red Sea could not be more difficult. <laughs> because we, like Peter, want to say no. But what is it we're really afraid of? Why is it we are so fast to say no to having our feet washed? Now, I know all of you are going to come up with some very good reason, like I didn't cut my toenails or I forgot to wash my feet or I work at a farm. But what's the real reason? What is it we are really afraid of if Jesus saw us without our shoes on? What are we giving up? What is it we are afraid God will see? 
It is to that question that Jesus addresses Peter and says, you don't yet understand why the teacher and master must take the place of the slave. But you will. You do not yet understand why I, the rabbi, the son of God, bend down with a towel. But you will. And Peter, of course, in his natural way, says then, not only my feet, but my face, my hands as well. And Jesus says, you don't need your face or your hands to be bathed. Only your feet. Because Jesus is teaching Peter, the disciples, and us why this night is so different and why this event that sets us free is our power and our strength to go and free others as well. In taking the place of the slave, Jesus gives us the model of service to follow not one that sees ourselves as stronger than our neighbor, but as one to wash them. Not as one to teach or to convict, but to heal and care for. It is, my sisters and brothers, a transforming moment for the disciples and for us to allow ourselves to see not only that we need to have our feet washed by Jesus, but that we ourselves must go out and wash the feet of others as well. It is, my sisters and brothers, the washing of the feet that gives the Eucharist its deepest and most profound meaning. Not that we receive the body of Christ, but that the body of Christ strengthens us to be Christ in the world. Not that Christ is present on the altar, but that Christ gives us the strength to go into the world, to find those who are broken, those who are frightened, and to lead them out of the slavery to sin and fear and dread that they encounter and take them with us on the journey of liberation the journey that brings us to baptism, to confirmation, and to the altar, and to with us see the Christ who calls us to touch one another in care, to wash one another's feet in service, and to be strengthened to go out by this saving grace and this great meal to do as he did. Jesus tells Peter, you don't understand yet, but you will. We too don't always understand what the Eucharist means. We sometimes see it only as something we attend weekly, sometimes as food for the week, but in this we are reminded and instructed again that it's not only food for our soul. It is not only a sacrament of grace that leads us closer to heaven. It is also the strength to transform our world. It is the strength to be humbled and served. It is the strength to be humbled and to serve. If we allow these events to transform us, as Jesus intends that they do, we will not yet understand all that God is asking of us, but we will be on the way. If we allow these events to change how we see our friends, our neighbors, how we see the people in the pews around us and the people across the aisle, if we allow Jesus' vision to become ours, then each time we come to the Eucharist, it will be as a people who are called to freedom and a people who free others. It will be as a people not afraid of God's judgment, 
but embracing God's love and bringing it to others. If we allow this table to transform us, we will depart not only fed, but strengthened and prepared to bring the transforming love of Christ into our world. And I promise you, if we allow Jesus to transform us at this table, neither will we be afraid to have our feet washed next year.